Well, in order to understand the current turmoil in the Palestine, it's important to understand the historical context. Historically, the Jewish people have claimed that this land belongs to them. Uh, they cite uh, holy scriptures and religious uh, books to substantiate their argument and they say that they have always been there and they were kicked out from that land multiple times and uh, historically it was the part of the Roman Empire and with the rise of Islam it was captured by the Muslims, Arabs and it remained under the multiple uh, rulers of the Muslim world. Uh, finally it was uh, in the hands of the Ottoman empires and uh, it remained uh, into the hands of the Ottomans until their uh, decline uh, just after the First World War. And according to a census of uh, 1887, uh, the vast majority of the uh, Palestine uh, was Muslim. And according to uh, a census of 1887, uh, almost 87% of the population was Muslim. 10% uh, was Christian, a very tiny minority was Jews, only 3%. Then this area was captured by the British Empire and that uh, allowed uh, the immigration of the Jews at uh, and between 1920 uh, to 1939, according to some statistics, more than 300,000 Jews migrated from various parts of the world, uh, mainly from Europe. And then in 1936, uh, uh, this uh, mass immigration forced the British to put an end to this uh, migration that infuriated uh, the Jewish uh, terrorist group, especially Haganah, that carried out attacks not only against the Arabs, uh, uh, but uh, the British Empire as well. And then, you know, the Second World War erupted and it uh, created a wave of sympathy for the Jewish people because of the Holocaust uh, that killed uh, more than six million Jews. And uh, but even then, we will have to go a bit in the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire where more than 10 nations used to live and all aspired to get their own uh, nationhood. And uh, there was uh, a Jewish, uh, uh, a great Jew Jewish leader who turned out to be the, uh, in a way, founder of Zionism. He also first tried to create a Jewish state within that empire, but uh, then uh, circumstances convinced him that that's not possible. Then he started focusing his attention on the Palestine. So uh, the Jews people did not have majority in the, in, in the Palestine, but because of the imperial policy, uh, they started migrating towards the, the present day Palestine and this is how they got a significant presence there. And then there were so many imperial conspiracies, for instance, most of the Arabs uh, states were nationalist and they had a sort of inclination towards socialism or the uh, then USSR. And um, as it is famously said that an Ulster amidst the hostile uh, Arab states. So they wanted to create an Ulster like uh, in the Ireland, they had uh, a friendly, uh, you know, sort of uh, political entity. Uh, they wanted to create the same entity inside the Arab world. So the Europeans uh, helped uh, create this new state and the British at times made different promises. They made promises to the Palestine. They said one thing to the French and maybe another thing to, uh, to, to the Jews. And after, in the aftermath of Second World War, there was uh, a wave of sympathy for the uh, Jewish people. Uh, and then finally British handed over the current uh, present day Palestine or the state of Israel to the United Nations that announced the partition plan and uh, with the equal amount of land distributing between uh, Israel and the Palestinians, the Palestinians rejected uh, that plan saying that it is the continuation of the European colonialism and then 1948 war erupted and uh, in which uh, uh, Israel controlled or rather captured more than one third of the area that was initially designated for the state of Israel, forcing more than 300,000 uh, uh, Palestinians to migrate. And some people go to the extent of claiming 600,000 Palestinians and their descendants now are numbered around 7 million living uh, in various parts of the world, including Jordan and uh, several other parts of the Middle East. And then the, this tension continued. Then we had this six day war in 1967. And uh, um, at that time, uh, uh, 
uh, what we call Gaza today and uh, another part uh, uh, that is run by uh, Mahmoud Abbas. Uh, so these parts were uh, divided into different countries or they were controlled by Jordan and Egypt and they were taken over by Israel uh, during the war of 1967. Then they needed to, to decide what to, be, what to do with these parts and they started settlements there. And uh, today more than 250 settlements are there which according to international law are illegal because Gaza and uh, 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 other parts uh, which is ruled by uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, they are according to international law, there cannot be any settlement. These are Palestinian territories but now uh, more than 200,000 uh, 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 Jews are living there. and. Uh, Israel, according to its detractors, has created a sort of apartheid there. There, have, uh, there has been a network of routes connecting mainland Israel to these settlements. But according to international law uh, and the United Nations, these settlements are illegal. So the initial partial plan was that the Jerusalem would be uh, a sort of uh, an open city. It would be open to Christian, Muslims and uh, Jews because it houses holy sites of the people belonging to Islam, Christianity and Judaism. In East Jerusalem, Muslims uh, have a significant presence and according to some, uh, they constitute majority and the Palestinians want this part to be the future capital. While there are Jews and especially the hardliner Jews who consider the entire Jerusalem as their territory and uh, uh, people like Errol Sharon and uh, then Netanyahu, these are the people who say that they are doing nothing but to exercise their sovereignty over an area that is already theirs. So in East Jerusalem, there is a certain part, Jake, uh, Sheikh Jarrah, where around 70 families have been living there. They have been living there for a long time. Now Israelis, uh, or rather settlers use uh, the court of law so they approached the high court of israel that uh, handed down a verdict against these uh, 70 palestinian families that have been living there or uh, asking them to vacate that place and the uh, the jews the ultra jews or especially the hardliner jews they started forcing them to leave that area and then uh, the, during the same time you know you have jamatul vida or and uh, uh, that there was another celebration on the part of Israel. They were uh, marking 1967, the day when the Jerusalem was captured by Israel. So uh, the people who gathered in Al-Aqsa Mosque, they started showing solidarity with these 70s family that escalated into a sort of uh, conflict and uh, uh, protest erupted not only part of Jerusalem, but other parts of Israel where Arabs are living. And then Hamas set an ultimatum to, uh, uh, to Israel, uh, asking them to withdraw their troops from Alaska, uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. And when Israel did not do that, they started a barrage of attacks that have killed nine civilians. And uh, Israel resorted to sledgehammer tactics using extreme force and some detractors called it brute force that has killed more than 119 Palestinians so far, wounding uh, around uh, 1,000 or more than 1,000, destroying a number of buildings, forcing a lot of people to migrate from the Palestinian territories. And unfortunately, international community is silent. It's not extending its support. It's still resorting to the mantra that Israel has a right to self-defense. Now the problem is that what will be the aftermath? There is some people say that it is the irrationality of Hamas because Hamas knows very well that uh, with the very meager military resources, they can never defeat Israel. Uh, Israel uh, has one of the most efficient armies in the world and uh, 1967 war eastern the world when it uh, destroyed the armies of several uh, arab countries or rather their air force air forces within no time so israel uh, there is no match between the military might of israel and that of hamas even then some people accuse hamas of picking fights of infuriating or triggering a conflict but there are other who believe that it's mainly israel because now hardliners are competing for political influence so whenever they have to do it they just try to uh, uh, start a conflict and that conflict somehow help them 
garnered the support of uh, the hardliner Jews, the settlers and other people. So it has a political angle. So there is a political angle for everyone, for uh, the hardliner Israeli parties. It is a way to gain more supports from, uh, from their voters. For Hamas, it is, uh, uh, it is also an opportunity to prove their jihadi credential and their credential of resistance. They say, look, we are the only force. It has also provided an excuse to Mahmoud Abbas to postpone the election, which he fear he will definitely lose because of his hobnobbing with uh, Tel Aviv or Israel. So it is uh, there is, you know, sort of uh, an opportunity, a political rather a political opportunity for all the stakeholders. There are some critics who believe that if the United States and the European, uh, you know, powers uh, condemn Israel in a way, they would be condemning themselves because it was they who established also settler empires, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, United States itself. They are all settler states. They exterminated the local population. And uh, Israel, the establishment of Israel is in a way is the result of colonialism. And all the Western powers have been colonial powers as well. So it is important. But above all, naturally, it is uh, the economic interest uh, uh, Jewish community is thought to be one of the most influential communities across the world. They are into business, they are into trade, they are into scientific community. So, and they, ha they enjoy great influence inside the United States and United Kingdom and parts of Europe. Then, of course, there is a wave of sympathy as well. Still, many people uh, sympathize with them because of uh, the Holocaust and because of what happened during the Second World War with them. But of course, uh, they will never, uh, since uh, uh, the Jewish business community especially enjoys a lot of influence inside the United States and several parts of the, uh, of, of the European continent, that's why it's difficult for them to take a position on that. Current situation, Israel may be testing uh, the patience of Joe Biden and his inclination because he's different from uh, Donald Trump. So, uh, so far he has proved uh, that he's not very keen on throwing his support behind the Palestinians and the uh, American statement or the statement coming from the European continent uh, uh, resorting to the mantra of uh, Israel has a right to self-defense indicates that they all stand with Israel. Um, ideally, if Israel recognizes 1967 borders, uh, there could be peace, but uh, in realistic uh, world or uh, in realistic terms, it's very difficult. Uh, because now there are so many uh, Jews living in the Gaza, you know, and in, the, in other Palestinian territories. Uh, it's difficult for Israel to pull them out because they are living in settled colonies with schools, yeah, uni even one university, hospitals, and entire infrastructure. But this conflict has other aspects as well. Uh, recently, we heard that Saudi Arabia and Iran exchange positive signals now the the situation in the uh, in in palestine has put uh, those who want uh, peace in middle east especially in iran in a weak position it has strengthened the uh, hardliners inside iran and for the for the time uh, we will see that there would not be much normalization of relation between saudi arabia and iran and because and that would be because of the situation in palestine